Hi, this is Phil Shapiro. Does your family need an extra computer because Johnny's using it when Betty wants to use it and Betty's using it when Johnny wants to use it? I've got an idea for setting up an extra computer at your house, a wireless computer under $200, and I think it's going to work well for your family. The place to start is this gorgeous 23-inch monitor. I bought this from geeks.com and it's, it's got a VGA plug and it's 1920 by 1080 pixels. I paid about $150 for it. It's refurbished, but it works just great. Now, right about now, you're going to say, well, where am I going to get the extra money for the computer? Well, the computer is free, and so is the operating system. I'm using an old donated Dell here. It's a Pentium 3, Dell Dimension 4100. And this computer uh, is 1 gigahertz, has 384 megabytes of RAM, and somebody just gave it away. Now, you can get a donated computer yourself for free if you just ask around in your friend's friendship circle or go to a church sale, a, a tag sale, a thrift shop. There's lots of places to get these old computers. Sometimes you even see them by the side of the road. People put them out by the trash. It's sad to say. But you can take one of these computers and it could be your extra family computer. Believe me, it works pretty well. Uh, what I'm putting on here is Ubuntu Linux, and I got this CD disk from a Linux user group here in the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, the Linux user groups are called Lugs. You could also download it yourself from Ubuntu.com. And if you want to find a Linux user group in your city, just go on the web and search for the name of your city and Lug. And a day or two ago, I was on Twitter. I saw they even have a Lug in Dakar, Senegal. So there are Linux user groups popping up all over the place, and the people in those groups love to help you install Linux, especially on an older computer like this. All you got to do is ask. So here, I took this Linux and I popped it in here, and then I set this computer to boot from the CD-ROM rather than the hard drive. I went into the BIOS on this Dell, I pressed F2 on the startup. So let's take a look. I want to boot this computer and show you how well it surfs. I'm also using this Wi-Fi USB adapter. I bought this for about $15 from Newegg.com, N-E-W-E-G-G.com, Newegg.com. And this is the Encore Electronics 802.11G wireless adapter. It just plugs into any USB port and it gives you Wi-Fi. So let's see how fast this thing boots and how fast it surfs. And um, let's, let's take a closer look at it. So now switching on the computer, we're booting up. You'll see it doesn't take all that long to boot. Ubuntu Linux is the most popular Linux. It comes from Africa. Ubuntu means humanity to others, or I am because we are. And one of the neat things about Ubuntu is that it's always free, and it comes out twice a year with a new version. There's a new one coming out in April, and then another one in October this year. And here we're looking at the Ubuntu, it's, it's booting up, it's real pretty, I like these color schemes, kind of a earth color color schemes. And we'll soon be at the desktop. We'll start up Firefox, it's Firefox um, 3.5 or 3.6, it's real current. And, oh, they're asking us for a little password here, we'll type in a password. That's a password for our Wi-Fi. And it asks for that every time we boot. That's okay. We're using a, that Wi-Fi USB adapter. And it's now connecting to Wi-Fi. Good. Excellent. Now let me start up Firefox. You can see how fast Firefox starts on this old computer. I think it's pretty acceptable to me. Here it is. Firefox is booted. Let's go over here and look at the Washington Area Bicyclists Association website. WABA, W-A-B-A dot org. Let's see how fast this thing loads. I typed in W-A-B-A dot org. I noticed that on this older computer you type it in and you press enter and then you wait just a little bit but then the website pops up quickly. So you do a little bit of waiting, waiting, and then boom the website pops up. Do you see? Let's go to uh, Women in Film and Video. W-I-F-V dot org. Women in Film and Video. And then after that, let's go visit Gmail. Everybody uses Gmail. 
and if this could, old computer works well with Gmail, then you know it's very useful. Yeah, there we go. It really comes on the screen pretty fast, and we can scroll up and down. It doesn't feel at all sluggish. Uh, here's Gmail. Here comes Gmail. Of course, Gmail is when, uh, Gmail is like the doorway to many other free Google services. I love using my Gmail account for YouTube and then for Google Sites, where I like to build websites at Google Sites and blogger.com and here comes Gmail. Da -da -da -dum -dum -dum. Boom. You do have to have a little bit of patience, but this is certainly certainly usable if you're not in a huge rush. I think that's maybe the best way of describing it. Yeah, here it comes. Here's Gmail. And I'm going to log in with one of my Gmail accounts. And we'll see how fast things go. Good. Okay. I'm going to sign in. Check it out. It's asking me if it wants to remember my password. I say no. Look at this. This is pretty sweet. Look, I'm scrolling up and down. All my Gmail. I can open up any message. I subscribe to a bunch of lists. Yeah, it's very usable. I tell you, it's quite usable. Um, of course, it's real gorgeous looking at this big screen, but you don't have to use this huge monitor. I, I bought this 23-inch monitor just like as a demonstration that if you have a free computer and a free operating system, then you can splurge on the monitor. But if you wanted to, you could use like a 22-inch monitor. They sell for about $100. Check out a website called ecost, E-C-O-S-T dot com, or geeks dot com, or um, just search. Search Google for refurbished 22-inch uh, LCD monitor or 20-inch monitor. Um, if you used um, a donated CRT monitor, an old-fashioned monitor, um, your whole computer system here would be almost no cost except for maybe that $15 USB adapter. And even that might be no cost. And how about if somebody gave you an older laptop? Here's a Pentium 3 laptop that I rescued. It was totally free and it works great. Now, on this older computer, I'm going to put on a version of Ubuntu called Lubuntu, L-U-N-T, Lu, sorry, L-U-B-U-N-T-U, Lubuntu. And Lubuntu is a new version of, of Ubuntu that's come out that some people have made. And this over here, I got it from the internet. This runs on any computer with 128 megabytes or more of memory. And that means with some very old computers, maybe even 1997 or 1998 computers, can co be used on the web without viruses with a modern operating system. So Lubuntu, I put it onto this laptop. I wanted to show you how well it works. This laptop is a Pentium 3, and I think this has 384 megabytes of memory, but you could use Lubuntu, as I mentioned, with 128 megabytes or less. Lubuntu, the operating system, uses about 50 to 60 megabytes. And that leaves quite a lot of free space for some extra applications, like a word processor or a web browser. And so whether you use a desktop or a laptop, an old desktop or an old laptop, you could have an extra computer, either one or several, in your house or your business or your nonprofit organization. And it's all thanks to the miracles of Linux. And here's something very interesting to think about. This Lubuntu Linux which is the newest Linux that runs on the lightweight, um, on, on old computers, um, you could conceivably use it on a 1997 computer, a computer that was manufactured before Google was, was started in 1998. So that's incredible in the world of computing that you could use a computer that's more than 13 years old with a modern operating system, without viruses, with a modern browser. That kind of thing is unheard of, but Linux, makes it possible. In some ways, Linux is like alchemy. It, t it turns iron into gold. I think of it in that way, and I hope you do too after you've seen this video.